If you've been following our journey around the country to see all 51 of the national parks, you've probably been wondering where we've been over the last few months. Yeah, many of our viewers have commented, <laughs> where are your videos? You know, but that doesn't mean we've not been doing anything. Yep, we've been making some big decisions in our life, and big. one of those decisions <laughs> was to sell our house. That's it, it was a huge decision and, and uh, it was one that we gave a lot of thought to. Yep. But you know what? Selling your home and not being tied down to a single spot is really liberating and it really has allowed us to put some awesome plans together on what we want our retirement to yep. look like. We are going to travel the world for at least 10 years. So stay tuned. We're going to tell you about our plans um, for the summer, for next 10 years, and um, how we came to this decision. Stay tuned. C.S. Lewis said, you're never too old to set another goal or dream a new dream. We're John and Bev, and after a lifetime of hard work, our retirement goal is to travel the world and finish our lives with many memories we've made along the way. We are the Retirement Travelers. Come along as we travel the world on this crazy retirement adventure. We wanted to spend a little time telling you how we came to this big decision. Yep, we're big believers that God has a plan for our lives. Yes, and, and we had a disappointment in our lives. It wasn't a huge thing, but it really made us stop and think, what do we want from yeah. retirement? How can we live our best retirement lives? Yeah. And uh, it got us thinking. Yeah, and so our plan was, uh, you know, if we took the sale of our home and the money that we would get from it, the money that we spend in taxes, insurance, HOA fees, country club dues, because we lived in a golf, uh, gated golf community, it was absolutely fabulous place to live. And it made it tough. It was a, a beautiful view of the St. Lucie River. Yeah, and great it was, it people, was, great. It was, hard to, it was hard to leave. But in the big scheme of things, we could take that money and go see the world and travel and, and live our best retirement life. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things that we heard from many of our older friends at the in the neighborhood was we wish we would have done this when we were when we were younger and our health was good. And yeah. we're blessed with good health right now, so why not? Yeah. go see the world. Yeah. We are in our 50s and uh, we like to say we're in our mid 50s but we're kind of getting it's up there. Pushing to the higher part of the 50s now <laughs> but we still round down to mid 50s so go with yeah, us on yeah. that go one. with us mid, on mid it. Mid 50s. John likes to go with he's 39 but he's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway if you if you saw our last video one of the things that we talked about our number one tip for retiring early is to minimize uh, your life, the downsize your life. And so, so we decided to, to take our uh, practice what we preach and really yeah. take that seriously. So, yeah. and when we looked around at what we had, yes, we had a, our dream home, and it really was our dream home. It had a huge, expansive view of the St. Lucie River, it was just everything we ever wanted in a home. We also had a boat and a dock and two vehicles. And, you know, again, you know, we had downsized a few years ago, um, but we still hadn't downsized completely. That's uh, right. And, and when we looked around our, our home and we looked at what we had, we, we realized it, it's really just stuff. Tying us to a single location just didn't make sense for us for what we wanted in our retirement. We wanted to live a big life. Yes. Live small so we can have a big life. And... Um, you know, we're here for such a short time on this earth, and uh, we're going to try to make the most of it. That's right. So some of you have probably been wondering what we've been doing for the last four months besides just thinking. Well, <laughs> uh, we've given it a lot of thought, but just uh, as you know, people that have moved, packing up your home and getting rid of all your possessions takes a lot of time and thought. Yeah, uh, and people have asked us, what are you doing with all your stuff? And we really didn't keep much. No. We kept our pictures. No, um, we, sold, we sold our condo furnished, yeah. and then uh, we gave away a few things to our, our, our kids. Yeah, and um, then we've um, given away some things to charity, and uh, we sold our boat, we sold a car, <laughs> and um, at the end of the summer, we're gonna sell our Airstream, and we're gonna sell our truck that we pull it with. 
So that, that was a lot of time uh, spent doing those things. And then we're also, we want to have the best possible retirement life. So we wanted to continue learning new things. Yeah. So one of the things we did, uh, we've always wanted to be able to rent sailboats uh, as, as, we, we as we travel the world. So we did a, a five three-hour lessons, taking sailing lessons. And yeah. had a great time and we learned, learned a lot. We're not experts, you no, know. We're, we're not ready for the America's <laughs> Cup yet. <laughs> no, but our our teacher Hunter was absolutely fantastic. He just he really taught us so much. So much. That was so much fun. And you know, we could have been sailing the whole time we lived there. I know. I wish and, we, I wish we would have learned yeah. Uh, sooner. Yeah, he, but he, then John did something else. Yes, we we want to be better photographers, and and yeah. Bev bought a new camera, and and I bought a drone, and one of the things I did was go get my commercial drone license. Yeah, um, it was a lot of studying. A lot of studying, but it was actually uh, learned a lot doing it, and um, we hope I, to incorporate more drone footage. Yes, as in you'll our... see in the upcoming videos, we're going to be incorporating a lot more drone footage, yeah. uh, which I think you'll enjoy. Yeah, and part of our upgrade of our camera equipment was to uh, learn about it. We still don't know as much as we need to know, but I've been taking a master class online uh, to learn photography, videoing, um, some behind-the-scenes social media type things. Uh, it's really been a great experience for me to learn. Retirement yeah. is, a, is, is a time to learn. It's, a, you know, it's one of the things we have learned in retirement. We have actually been busier uh, since I retired about 16 months ago. <laughs> it has been nonstop uh, with travel. You know, I think back to last year, we had never spent a night in an RV before. That's right. And then we spent six nights or six months uh, in an RV and, and we loved it. Yeah, it we learned time. that 200 square feet didn't uh, didn't affect our happiness at all. In fact, that probably helped us to see that, hey, wait a minute, we can do this. We can stay in yeah. a hotel. We can stay in an Airbnb. Um, you know, we're fine being out that, that as long was, as we're together. That was definitely a, a big influence, the RV trip. And, and we learned so much. As we go around and and investigate the different places we go to. We learn every single time. Yeah. Uh, so that's been a lot. Of, been a lot of fun. Uh, well, and another thing that we've learned on this trip was that uh, there are some awesome people in the world, and that's one thing we're so excited to go to another country and meet someone. Yeah. But we really met some awesome people last year in our travels. Uh, RV people are the nicest people in America. Yep. Yeah. We loved. We love to make uh, new connections and meet people. We have a lot of. You know. We yeah. left a lot of great uh, friends at our neighborhood yeah. but we've met so many people on this on this uh, RV journey and we know we're going to meet more on our trips <laughs> yeah. around the world. We even met a lot of people online through yeah. our yes. YouTubing and Instagram and we've made some connections with people um, that's that's really special to us so we Good. hope to continue that. One of the things that we did during this time is we made sure we went to all of our doctor's appointments. Uh, we went to get eye appointments and uh, just every checkup that we could, dermatology, and those things that we are not going to let slide uh, during our travels. And shots. You forgot the shots. Lots and lots, <laughs> lots of shots. Lots and lots of shots. <laughs> we, we went to uh, Passport Health where we could get our shots for travel. And we took some shots I didn't even know you could get. Uh, I know. Uh, I did I mean, not know you could get rabies shots. Yeah, yeah we got all of our, uh, we got our COVID shots, but we also got rabies, hepatitis B, Thing. We get more shots than the dog gets. <laughs> <laughs> we do. And and uh, it took a few weeks to get that all done. Uh, but it was something that we know will pay off. We certainly don't want to get I sick. I did get a Batman um, Band-Aid, which I really liked. <laughs> so that, that made did. it all worth it. Yeah. Um, Pat's, Passport Health was so awesome. They, uh, they helped us. They took a list of where we planned to go. They... They really thought through how, where we're going, what we would be exposed to, helped us make some really good decisions. So we have a, a, a couple more shots we're going to do in the fall, but we're pretty well set up for travel to Central America and, yeah. and Asia and really anywhere in the world. So I think we're yeah. in pretty good shape. And we'll keep doing that. Um, one of the things that everybody's asked us about is what we're going to do for health insurance. And that was a tricky thing because in a lot of countries, health care is a lot cheaper than it is in the United States. And so we decided to keep our, our health insurance that we have um, through Blue Cross 
And uh, they told us that they would reimburse us for our expenses. So, so basically, if we have expenses overseas, we're going to pay out of network and out of you know, pocket, and, and then we'll get reimbursed. That. And if something would happen uh, that one of us gets sick, we'll just return to the United States and, yeah. and we have our health care coverage. Yeah, a lot of health care coverage for world travelers uh, requires you to only be in the United States two months a year. And uh, if we got sick, we didn't want to be limited. So um, that was our reasoning for keeping what we have. And um, we'll, we've been researching other insurances, uh, travel insurance, and all kinds of things like that. So we may talk about that in the future. Another big uh, decision uh, that we had to make is, uh, if you saw our videos last year, you knew we had two little Havanese dogs. And, and we lost little Ginger on the trip last year. Yeah. And Annie is our constant companion. She's 11 years old. And uh, we couldn't stand the thought of not traveling uh, you know, with with, her. without her. Yeah. So she's going to come along with us. Uh, you know, on the oh RV my. trip, and then we've tried to pick out for the next few years uh, dog-friendly countries that we could plan yeah. to go to. But even that takes quite a bit of planning to yeah. find dog-friendly Airbnbs and all the procedures to get because a every dog country, in the country has a different rule. If you have a pet and want to find out more, uh, stay tuned or, or contact <laughs> us, and we will have been through uh, all that by next year. Yeah. So now we'd like to share our plans uh, of what we see happening for the next 10 years. Yeah, for this summer, we're going to finish out the national parks in the lower 48 and also finish out seeing all of the states. Um, we only have two states left. Yeah, one, one of our goals was to see all the national parks in the lower 48 and all see, also see all 50 states. Yeah. And so we're going to go do that uh, this summer. And then at the end of the summer, we're going to sell our Airstream and um, our truck. And we're going to just have a suitcase with our things. We'll check that. And we'll dog. carry on our dog and our camera equipment. And um, we'll take and off. Go see the world. So, yep. so what we've done is over the next 10 years, we've divided uh, the globe into 20 segments. So <laughs> think, think 25 to 6 month trips. Uh, over the next 10 years and that's how we're doing the planning process so that we can truly get to see everything. Yeah, so this some um, this winter after our Airstream trip we're going to leave at the end of October and go to um, to Panama City and Panama and we're going to go to language school yes, and learn to speak Spanish. One, one month of, of, <laughs> of intense Spanish learning. So we'll, <laughs> I have more faith that John can do it than we'll me. We'll see how that goes. But again, it, it, it goes with the theme of trying to learn new things. And yeah. we, we want to try to learn cultures of where we're going and you know, if we can at least get by in Spanish, that would be uh, that pretty would cool. be helpful because we want to spend a lot of time in South America and Central America. So next winter is uh, Central America, and then we're going to come back and t take a few vacations with our kids, and then we're heading to Europe. And when we go to Europe, we're going to spend the rest of the year there. So we're really going to be there for nine months because we want to get our schedule where we're coming home at Christmas. Yeah, probably like Christmas and midsummer. And, you know, as the, as the grandkids get older, they'll be out of school. And we think that will be a good uh, system for us. Yeah. Maybe Christmas and midsummer visits into the United States uh, yeah. will work out perfect. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's our plan. Um, we really hope that you will follow along with us on our journey. We're going to try to do a few new things. We've learned a few new tricks. And uh, we hope to share those with you. <laughs> So hit that subscribe button and come along with us on our epic travel adventure.